Well, hi there and welcome. It is the Nisha Jackson Show and I am in Nisha's uh, studio today and it's cool being up here back in Oregon and uh, we're here because um, I have not been feeling great. I haven't felt horrible, but I haven't felt great. I know that when I was working with Nisha closer, I don't know, was it 10 years ago maybe? I think so. Yeah, at least 10. Yeah, so it's been a while. And I could see pictures of now and then pictures of when I worked with Nisha. And I'm thinner and healthier and all kinds of stuff. And so we talked about coming up here, doing the blood work and trying to get fixed. So that's what we're going to do today. I'm going to get fixed. Yes. How are you going to fix me? Well, I would like to actually even add to that little bit of history because... You know, one of the things that inspires me to do what I do is when I see incredible people, well, I think everybody deserves this type of treatment, but when I see really incredible outliers like Rusty, and I, I look at him and go, okay, he's in a window where he has to start to step it up. He's got to get balanced. He's got to get on track because at some point, age-wise, it's a little too late. I right. mean, technically, it's never too late, but... But when I look at him and I look at all the things he's trying to do and I know how much stress he's had in his past, I worry about if he stays on this path, it's not going to end well. And so... Is it really that bad? It is that bad. Okay. And it, it really is that bad for anyone that is not doing the things they need to do to sustain their health and stay balanced to reduce age-related illnesses, right? right. So your, your aging really is kind of optional. Isn't that a great tagline? That is nice. That'd be a good business. You like that? Okay. okay. So, so last month we had a little chit chat about it because, you know, we've been doing these shows and Rusty likes to bring out his ding dongs and Twinkies and what is that drink? Rockstar, Rockstar Energy. Star. Well, it's zero carbs. Zero carbs, whatever. He's bringing out all this garbage and it's, you know, it's kind of funny and all that stuff, but we just decided, you know what, what would even be more amazing would be to get him on track, get him up here to Oregon, see me in the office, go over the laboratory test results and get him balanced so that, so that that we can talk about it because it's not easy to turn around the train, but with the right tools and the right roadmap, you can do it. So that was, that's a little bit of history on, on why we talked about this last month that we got to just start doing it and then talking about it because real life stories of success are amazing. Yes. All right. And you're going to be my very next one. Yay. (laughs) Okay. So I got this lab in the box thing. How did, what is that and how'd you start? Okay. So the reason why I wanted you to have the lab in the box was you don't live in Oregon where our clinics mostly are. Uh, We are expanding outside of Oregon, but right now we're predominantly in Oregon. So Um, I knew you needed to come up here for treatment, but we could start the process with you out of state. So we sent you all the paperwork because we need to know about your history, your family history, your current symptoms, your medications, your supplements. And then we sent a, we call them lab in a box, which is just a lab draw kit. We send that to, we send it to your home Mm -hmm. and um, it has a little freezer pack in it. So he froze that little pack and then he took it into his doctor's office. We also can have our patients take it in a lab course, another. That's where I went, I went to lab. Okay, national uh, laboratory, a draw facility. And so he went in there and had his labs drawn. And then they're actually FedExed overnight to our laboratory facility here in Oregon and they're processed. And then when I got the test results from Rusty and I knew that it was going to be still a week or two before he was going to arrive here in Oregon now, I looked at the test results and I said, holy Moses. Can can I tell you the, now (laughs) Nisha and I have a good relationship and we joke around. She probably would not send this text to a patient, but I got one of the funniest texts I've ever received in my life. It was just got your results back. The show's going to be great. Your results are awful. (laughs) Just awful. Thank you. (laughs) They really were awful. I mean, I actually kind of in a sick sort of way like to see results like this with patients because it just confirms why we do what we do. And it also confirms that that person's going to go from feeling tired and irritable and gaining weight, not sleeping well at night and getting restorative sleep, maybe losing hair, getting too much gut fat. They're going to go from that to 
a complete reversal of those symptoms with our plan. So kind of in a sick way, I look at test results like that and I kind of get excited. So like, oh, are you predicting gonna I'm going to look more like Marky Mark Wahlberg? <laughs> oh, exactly. Or, yes. That's I'm sure your I'm, hair will grow back. Uh -huh. It'll all be six great. Pack. <laughs> in no time. I'm yeah. sure by Christmas. Oh, good. Good. Yeah. <laughs> It doesn't work that quick, unfortunately. No. no, it does work quickly, but it's a process of putting all the pieces together because this is not just like taking a prescription and I'll see in six months. It's a very detailed eating plan, exercise plan, stress management plan, optimizing all the hormone and the nutrient levels, like the vitamin levels. So we really, and, and detoxifying your body at the same time. So it's, it's kind of an intense program, but anyone can do this. That's what I was going to, is it just a, a male thing? It's a female thing? Anybody can do it. Anyone can do it. We even treat girls that are 13 that are really struggling with PMS or heavy periods, or we'll treat teenage boys that maybe aren't growing really well or having body pain or reoccurring injuries. So there's all sorts of different age groups that we treat. Like, I'm really worried about my daughter who turns 19 today and they're telling her, oh, you got fibromyalgia. And so her excuse now for everything is, oh, well, my fiber's kicking up again. Right. And <laughs> fiber. Yeah, at 19, I, I have a hard time believing that that's a case. Or... Well, it is it actually very common, but fibromyalgia is just a compilation of symptoms that I think is related to a complete hormone decline. So if you look at our diet at today, 19? our diet is so toxic today, which has a direct influence on our brain chemicals and a direct influence on our stress glands, our female hormone glands, our ovaries and the production of hormones, and also our thyroid. So you know, when you're not feeding your gut what it needs to have for optimal nutrient levels, but also optimum optim uh, absorption of the nutrients, when we're not giving our gut where, what we need, that affects our immune system. So will and the IHOP immune system be is, into that category? Yes. yes and the immune, the immune system is tied to autoimmune disorders like fibromyalgia. And you've had an autoimmune disorder. I did. So my biggest tip for you, the tip off for you, Rusty, was when you said, oh, well, I have a history of low thyroid, which I knew. I have a history of low testosterone, which I knew. I'm, I'm not eating as well. You were bringing out those you know, little treats on the show. And I knew that, I know you've had a lot of high stress, like who hasn't? And so when you put all of those things together, sometimes it's such an insidious onset, meaning that it happens over such a long period of time that you don't even know how bad you feel. Yeah. You don't know how bad you feel till you feel better. So that was my tip off with you is like, we got to get this going. We got to okay. just switch gears. All right. I'm in. I'm in. So what, so we're going to go to the, uh, the office a little later on. Yes. What are we going to do there? Yes. So based on your lab results, which we will talk about in, once we get to the office, the lab, re, lab, lab results, uh, we will sit down and we will go over every single one of them. And I'll explain to you when your testosterone is low, what do you feel like? Um, at your age and where should it be for your age and if your if your cortisol which is one of your main stress hormones is low or high what does that mean and then go through all the nutrient levels go through your chemistry screen look at your blood sugar which I'm just going to give you a heads up it ain't good really it ain't good we, okay. we need to change that around right away but the good news is optimizing your testosterone is going to help you stay off the diabetic route. Okay. What about for most guys? What, what is the symptoms of having low testosterone and what do we know? Right. So I think it, even though men often can't articulate this, I think one of the first symptoms that men get is fuzzy brain where they're just not focusing. They're like scattered. They've got the squirrel brain going on, you know, where or they're, I they're can't distracted. Quite get that word. Yeah. I know what it is. Right. I can't. Right. I played trivia the other day and uh at a, at a bar and i missed a political question and it was like and i was saying this is the moment i know i have alzheimer's right here <laughs> write it down i now know you know i've had 30 year olds come in thinking they had brain tumors they had a brain tumor because they couldn't remember anything they had major add symptoms going on they couldn't focus uh, they had uh, problems with just remembering, like word finding, like they'd go into the bathroom and forget why they were there. Just a just, just lot of symptoms from a cognition standpoint. So that, that's a very common symptom in all age groups of men and women. The other one that often brings men in, or let me rephrase that, 
their partners bring them in, <laughs> okay. their wives or partners, significant <laughs> others drag them into the office because men is like, oh, there's nothing wrong. And when they come in and we ask some very specific questions, it's kind of interesting because they don't think they have any symptoms, but then when we go through the list of symptoms, they realize, wow, I really do have quite a few of those symptoms. Mm. So the, the number one um, most common symptom is fatigue. They just don't feel as energetic and as, as um, kind of like zest. I like and my naps. Bigger. I like my naps, right? Yeah, now. they just kind of, they just kind of, they just don't have much stamina. And so, uh, and again, that can be at a young age or that can be, you know, and I'm talking about 20s, 30s, 40s. Or certainly we have 70 year old men that actually felt pretty good up until that point and then they just hit the wall. The classic sign is hitting the wall in the afternoon is pretty common with low testosterone. Okay. Body me. pain, body pain and inflammation, high cholesterol, high blood sugar, excessive cravings, grouchiness. Shut up. Grouchiness, like irritability. And again, that's often why the wives bring the, or the significant others bring the partners in is they can't deal with their attitude. They're okay. just, just like, I don't want to go out to dinner tonight. I'm just going to stay home and watch TV. I'm not interested in mowing the lawn for the third week in a row. Just not, their motivation's just gone. And that is really very much testosterone related. So I also feel um, a little weaker. I can feel yes. not as strong as... Good point. Loss of muscle mass is another one for sure. Men often are in the gym four or five times a week pumping iron and they're not getting anywhere. Mm -hmm. Their body mass is not going up. They're continuing to gain fat around their midsection. When you have low testosterone, this is a terrible thing. When you have low testosterone as a man or a woman, your brain's perception of pain is much higher. So you don't have more body pain technically, I'm just more but, your brain, man. but your brain is telling you you do. So mm -hmm. pain is a real problem for low testosterone for men and women. But I think one of the things I like the most about replacing testosterone in women when they need it, and also in men, is that their ability to manage stress is so much better. Meaning that they don't fly off the handle so easily. They don't get anxiety and heart racing and, and feel kind of like um, almost like they, they don't have the ability emotionally to deal with stress. It's just they feel stronger emotionally and stronger physically. So testosterone is very important for heart disease prevention, dis uh, dementia prevention. It's also important. It's the biggest and strongest bone building hormone we have. So keeping your bones and your muscles strong, it prevents muscle atrophy with age. So, I mean, the list kind of goes on and on. Okay. So these are the reasons why, and this is just testosterone. There's many other hormones we can talk about, but that's just testosterone. Okay, so I used to do testosterone with you, and we used a gel and a cream and shots every once in a while. Is that what we're going to do now, or have things changed? Well, there's the options for testosterone replacement for men is topical testosterone, which works pretty good. I don't think it works great across the board, uh, but for some men, it's it's it it works well and it's it's um, it's it's easy to use every morning. Just uh, rub it in here. Yeah, the only problem is is that you don't want to get it on your kids, and you don't want to get it on your dog, and you don't want to get it on your on your partner, female partner, because they can't handle that much testosterone. Then so, she's growing a beard. So there are right. some contamination issues that way, but there's ways to avoid that. So okay. topical is one. But I have heard that that is kind of going out of favor. Is that correct? Or well, not? I think I think hormone specialists like myself are using it less and less, just because there's other modalities, there's other routes of administration. So topical is one. Okay. Then the other one we did was shots. Shots is another one. And the, the shots usually are given anywhere between every seven days and every 14 days. It actually can be given in the muscle, which is a longer needle, like the one you've used in the past. And also, But I can't do it myself, and I can't come up to Oregon all the time, so that's going to be a problem. Yeah, you have to either find somebody to do the shot for you because it is, it is for some men very difficult to give themselves a shot because it is a longer needle. You can use a shorter needle, but you would need to do the shots two to three times a week. And what I found when I did it myself, I mean, I couldn't walk for days sometimes. I mean, it hurt because yeah. obviously I wasn't doing it or something right. Well, a lot of times when you give the shot in the leg, like you're talking about, the leg is tense when you put it in and then it can cause a lot of discomfort. So anyway, um, and then 
and um, there's patches. And then the other form of testosterone that, that I like probably the most is testosterone pellets, which I'd like to talk to you about yeah, when we get to the What is that? Because we, that was not available when I was here before. I don't right. think we didn't do that. Right. What is the, what does that do? Well, the interesting thing about testosterone pellets or hormone pellets, because women can get them too, is that they've actually been in the United States since the early 1980s. Uh, they are bioidentical, plant-based, FDA, the testosterone itself is FDA approved. Okay. And um, so they're little tiny, uh, they look like puffed up pieces of rice. Each individual one is 200 milligrams. And we dose the number of pellets that you need based on your age, your uh, current laboratory test results of testosterone and estrogen. And then we also base it on your weight because heavier men need more testosterone, which a lot of standard treatments of testosterone do not take that into consideration. And, um, and so then we dose, we, we decide how many pellets we're going to put in you uh, based on, on those factors. How do you put it in me? So we make a little tiny surgical incision right in the upper buttocks area in the fat, ow. the fat tissue. Okay, I got a lot of that, but we, ow. We numb the area first. I use a lot of numbing medication. So that's the only thing you feel is a little tiny stick to numb the area. And then I make a tiny incision, not even the size of an eraser head, so it's little. And then I have an instrument that we use, a, a sterile instrument that we use to put into the, into the fat in the upper buttocks area. And then we roll the pellets into the, into, the, into the fat in three different tracks. So they're spread out a little bit. And I'm okay. guessing you're Because I was going to say, I'm kind of manly, so I'm going to need like one of these pellets, maybe <laughs> two. You're going to need 10. 10? Yeah. 10? Your level's pretty bad. Now, I, okay, I understand. This has nothing to do with blood. Uh, Nisha was very kind to loan me uh, the vehicle of her organization, uh, Peak Medical. And it's a it's a VW bug painted with rainbow colors. I do believe <laughs> I have orange. lost, I have lost <laughs> much of my testosterone just driving that car around. It's a little so, loud. Yeah, so put a you know put a couple extra te uh, pill pellets in there just to kind of cover that. But it, it is really ten. It is girly, um, but yeah, we need to put ten pellets in you. Now that sounds like a lot, but it's spread out you know an area about that big. And, you know, we do three different tracks and you are going to be sore in the area for, I'm guessing, maybe five or six days afterwards. You okay. can't do any heavy activity. Uh, you could do walking, but you, we don't want your glute muscles to be pushing up against the pellets. So a good excuse not to have to go to the gym. Only for four or five days. And then you're going to hit it hard, Rusty. I'm okay. telling you right now, you're going to hit it hard. Because I'm going to feel I want you're gonna to. Be, you're going to have so much energy. And okay. the great thing about the pellets is, that, that when they go in the fat tissue, the pellets um, are, are laying in the fat tissue and immediately your body starts developing capillaries around the pellets. So when, the, when, you, know, when you have capillaries around anything that, that releases a, a, med, a medication like a hormone, when you're, it's based on heart rate. So when your heart rate goes up and your blood's pumping through the capillaries in your veins and arteries, when the blood is going through and your heart rate is up, you're actually releasing more testosterone into the capillaries because there's a higher heart rate. You know, there's more pumping of the blood. So it works so cool, Rusty, because when you're, when you're anxious, when you're getting out of bed and you're moving around or you're exercising or you're having sex, anything that raises your heart rate, you release more testosterone at that time. Having what? Sex. I haven't. Yeah. I haven't. Experienced That's why I said that. I kind of like slurred it. Uh, yeah. And it's been a long um, time. so when you're resting, taking it easy, <laughs> or sleeping, your heart rate's lower and you release less. So it's very physiologic. It's very much like how your body would normally produce hormones. So and it bypasses the liver, uh, which I think is a really good idea. It's completely painless for six months. I mean, you don't. They're just working for you. You don't have to remember to take something. It's just that the pellets last every six to seven months and they completely dissolve. Okay. So that's the thing I like the most about the pellets. All right. So I need to come back and do this in about six months. Six to seven months. We'll check your levels in three months and we'll check them again at six months and see where you're at. We like to do them at three months initially because he's go this is what's going to happen. And you're, you're going to hear him say this. I feel amazing. I got my life back. My energy's up. I've lost 30 pounds. Uh, my brain's working. I feel, I feel like tackling a few more work projects. 
I'm going to bring on some more clients. I, I'm getting better sleep at night. His blood levels are going to look tremendously better. And, and it will be really fun to follow this on the show because this is going to be what is going to happen. I've done it for 30 years. I've seen thousands and thousands of patients do this, go from feeling um, awful or mediocre to great. And, um, oh, and I'm, I'm not... I'm not exaggerating. It, it will be so much better, but we'll check your blood levels in three months to kind of see where your sweet spot is, okay. you know, where, where your, um, where your peak level is. And then again, in six months to see when it's time to replace the pellets. You know, peak level, you should name your business that peak. Mm -hmm. There you go. Okay. So, uh, I guess we're going to go off to the office. Yes. Uh, that will be in the next show. And what are you going to do? You're actually going to, you're not going to like show this stuff on the show, are we? Well, I was thinking we could show the whole, if you decide to do the pellets and I explain everything to you and you decide that's a good option for you, I think we should videotape the whole thing. I mean, it's not, it, it, it's a little graphic, but I think, I think it would be helpful for people to see it. And you're going to need a few shots too, shots like vitamin shots because your levels are not good. So we're going to want to get those I will take my up. pain to help uh, your entertainment value. I will, <laughs> I will do that. Okay. Uh, if you want to find out more about Nisha Jackson, and you should, uh, nishajackson.com or Peak Medical. One Peak Medical. One peak, that's right. We're, we're changing the website. Onepeakmedical.com. One. Peak O N E med peak medical .com. Peak medical .com. and you uh, can still find it peak medical clinic .com. Well, no, we do the transition. But, but we're making a transition. If I'm going to put stuff in my butt, uh, we might as well start calling it by the right name. That's peak, right. One peak medical. One so, peak medical. And uh, your clinics are where? They're in. Oh, they're all over Oregon. Mm -hmm. uh, do you want me to go through the list? Yes. Okay, we're in Medford, Southern Oregon. We're in uh, Klamath Falls. We're opening in Grants Pass. We're in Roseburg, Eugene, and looking to open in, in Portland. Wow. And then also Dallas? Is that coming yes, or is that here? Yes. Dallas will be sometime in the in the first or second quarter of 2020. Man, you're busy. Yes. She's busy been. enough. And how's your leg, by the way? Oh, I think we should do a whole show whole on show. what's happened with my leg. Okay. She had a, a terrible accident and, <laughs> and walking around like she's the Terminator uh, with the brace on. Hey, it was a great, it's a, it's a great Halloween costume. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you very much. We'll catch you next time. She's Nisha Jackson. I'm Rusty Embrys, and this is the Nisha Jackson Show. <laughs>